All right, Mr. Chamberlain here. I wanted to go over um, this early Western Peak generator wiring diagram. And we had a question was, the remote panel is missing. So this harness has been cut off. And when we hook the battery up to the engine, nothing would happen. In other words, this is the main panel that's on the generator and nothing would happen when we push the preheat switch and the start switch. So the first thing I wanna do is, so this eight pin plug, so we understand which wires jump. I'm just gonna jump the inside ones and then we'll know that the outside ones also jump together. So that way we can kind of see the continuity and we'll follow the color codes. So first off, if we start up here at the battery, we're gonna run down through the battery cable. We have a 20 amp fuse. We're gonna run down. And what we would do if we had a remote panel is we would run through and jump. There's a jumper wire which would run that voltage back. So basically what that means is that voltage is gonna run down through the remote panel and back. If we did not have a remote panel, then it says that you would have this jumper here. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna run power from the battery down and then it's gonna jump over so we have continuity here if this remote panel isn't here. So we're gonna pretend that that remote panel is in there. We're gonna follow that red wire and that red wire is gonna run down. And my wire is gonna jump through and it's gonna continue red and that wire is gonna run down to my stop switch which has continuity. So the stop, with stop switch has continuity. When you wanna shut the engine off, you trip the switch, that opens this circuit. So red comes up and then there's a jumper wire here as well. So there's a jumper wire across that connects the top of the preheat switch. So from there, that wire then has constant power. So we have constant power that runs down from the battery, through the stop switch, up across, through the preheat switch, up through this brown wire. So that means voltage is gonna run down into the switch, out of the switch, up into this connection here. And then this is the preheat. And now we have to zoom in. So we can see that there's a jumper across the top of that red wire. So there is a jumper between this connection here and here. Now we're going to follow that brown wire. That brown wire comes up, jumps across, comes up here, and here's the brown wire. Now that brown wire continues up and it goes through the exhaust temperature switch, the water temperature switch, and a safety switch, okay, which are normally closed. So these switches will only open when the exhaust gets too hot or the water temperature gets too hot. So these are a normally closed switch. So we have continuity through these. So that power continues on and it goes to the oil pressure switch. Now, So that's a normally open switch. And that's where you really need to kind of look at the diagram to understand what's going on. So that voltage stops right there. So I don't have any voltage to energize the fuel solenoid on the injection pump, so I wouldn't have any fuel. So I need some way to energize that during cranking. So now we have the understanding that constant power will run through the stop switch, and it will run through a jumper, and it will run up back up to these stop switches, which are normally closed, and we have power waiting to get through the oil pressure switch. When the engine starts and you have oil pressure, now we'll have power to the fuel solenoid so the engine will run. So therefore, during cranking, we need some way to have power on this wire, and that's with this other wire, which is black. Now, early Westerbeek engines, this is from the 80s, way back then, what they did was because they could, they're engineers, was they have power to the gauges as a black wire. Not a red wire, not a purple wire, but a black wire. Ground is green. So if we look at the preheat switch, the preheat switch has power all the time up here 
onto these terminals and through. When I energize the preheat switch before I can crank it, when I energize that switch, power goes through the preheat switch, which sends power to the start switch. Then if I energize the start switch, then I would send power up this white wire, which will energize the starter solenoid, okay? There's my white wire there. Now, the other thing that happens here is I energize the preheat switch and that sends power to the gauges. They get constant power at that point and I have power on this black wire. And let's follow this black wire. And remember, this is power. So I have to jump over here and then that black wire comes up here and then that wire goes to and through this connection on the oil pressure switch. So you have constant power from the preheat switch while you're holding it to energize the fuel pump solenoid. So I have constant power here and I have power to my gauges and I'm gonna have power through onto this side through my start switch. So when I energize the start switch, I crank the engine over. When the engine starts, I let go of the preheat switch. Now there's no voltage going through this. So there's no voltage on this black wire anymore. However, we have this jumper. So the voltage continues through that jumper, the brown wire, and it goes through these switches. And now when the engine starts, I have oil pressure, this switch closes. Now I have voltage to my fuel solenoid and it back feeds back down the black wire and it lights up the gauges. So an interesting way that this is wired is we have power constantly into the stop switch, which allows power to constantly go through these switches to an open oil pressure switch. When we energize the preheat switch, we send power to the gauges and we send power through this connection and energize the fuel solenoid. Two ways to shut the engine down. One is there's an emergency stop switch down on the engine. You can flip that switch. It's normally up is closed, I believe. Down will open the switch and the engine will shut off. The other one is if we hit the stop switch here, this switch is normally closed. So when we trigger the stop switch, we open this switch, which breaks the power that goes to the brown wire that is powering the, the fuel pump solenoid. So the main reason that we had nothing happening at this panel, and that was one of the questions I had from my class, was we hook a battery up. This cable's cut. There's no remote panel. And I said, why won't the engine crank over? What's going on here? And the reason for that is because this jumper wire isn't here. There's no jumper. And it says here in the notes, it says remove the jumper if you are having a remote control panel. So what we need to do, because we don't have this, is we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna install a jumper wire here. And we're gonna jump this wire so that we have power down to this panel. Because we didn't have any power because it would go through this switch here. It would jump, there was a jumper here on this preheat switch which would allow power to go through. So the, the jumper was moved from here to here if we added this panel. Because we're removing this panel, we have to put the jumper back here. I hope that helps you understand a little bit more about how a generator power supply works and that look out, ground is not always black. In this case, it's green. So understand you need to look at old wiring diagrams like this.